How's it going? I started my electric car conversion journey about two years ago. In this series of videos, I'm going to try and summarize the things that I've learned along the way. Full disclosure, I am not an engineer. I'm just a curious dude with absolutely no idea of what I can't do. Maybe you're equally ignorant of your limitations and want to try an electric car conversion for yourself. Or perhaps you just want to watch me fumble through the process. Either way, I'll do my best to make these videos entertaining and hopefully useful. That's enough yapping. Let's go. First, I want to give you a big picture of what goes into an electric car conversion. These are the things you're going to need to consider. A donor car, an electric motor, a motor controller, a coupling to mount the motor and the transmission together, a battery, a battery management system, a charger, a main contact or emergency disconnect, a fuse or circuit breaker, a DC converter or a separate battery for your 12 volt system, and some kind of monitoring or display system to keep track of what's going on with your motor, your controller, your batteries, whatever else. Assuming the world doesn't end anytime soon, and there's a decent chance it might, I plan to talk about each of these topics in separate videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about the motor. If you've got lots of money to spare, you can buy a kit that'll convert your old classic gas-powered car to electric. Depending on where you get it, it's going to be fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, including the batteries. But if your goose just lays regular eggs, you can still do an electric conversion. The guys that have given me the confidence to attempt a budget EV conversion are Ben Nelson from 300mpg.org and Damian McGuire from EV BMW. And of course, all the folks at the DIYElectricCar.com forums. After choosing your car, the next most important decision is the motor. The first branch in that decision tree is are you going to buy a kit or are you going to go full on Dr. Frankenstein? If you've got $15,000 you won't miss, just buy a kit. It'll have everything you need and you'll have it done in a weekend. EV West and Can EV are a couple places that I know of that sell those kits. If you've decided to shop for your own motor, then the next decision is do you want AC or DC? I can't give you all the reasons why you might want one or the other. Lots of people have written opinions about which is right. The high-end kits you can buy and all the mass-produced electric cars use AC motors. A new motor will cost you between $1,000 and $4,000. But if you're lucky, you might find a pretty strong DC motor in an old electric forklift. And those can be had pretty cheap. I got mine from a junkyard for $200. This is like forklift heaven. Like seriously, where forklifts go after they die. This is the place. There's, there's gotta be, I can't even, I can't even know. There's probably 15 at least out here. Okay, if all goes well, that's where the motor's coming from for the bug. That's a Heister E50 MX something something 48 volt forklift. And we're about to tip it on its side and yank the motor out or do our best to try and yank the motor out. See how it goes. Getting the forklift motor out of the forklift was actually not as hard as I thought it was going to be. I don't know how many different kinds of motors there are, but I got some instructions from the guys at the DIYElectricCar.com forums, and it was super helpful, and I couldn't have done it without them. Okay, this is the big traction motor right here. This is the pump motor, which you could also use, I guess, for something smaller. So far, what we've got is, um, I don't know how many there's going to end up being. There's probably going to be 10 bolts around the front of this that are hooking, that are connecting the traction motor to the differential. So that's what we're working on first. So far, so good. If you do go this route, just be prepared. These engines are heavy. I haven't put it on the scale, but I would not be surprised if it weighed over 200 pounds. When you're looking for a motor, you want to know its power rating. On an electric motor, you might see the power recorded as horsepower or kilowatts. Now the motor that I got to put in my bug didn't have any markings on it at all. I just knew it came out of a forklift and it was huge. So it had to be powerful. Even though the kilowatts or horsepower weren't marked on the motor, there was a 500 amp fuse associated with the motor. And I know the motor was run at 48 volts. So with a little bit of math magic, I calculated out that the motor was probably somewhere around 24 kilowatts. Should be good enough to move a car. What we're gonna do today is take off some of these parts on this motor so that we can hopefully get it to fit in the bug. Right now, it's too long. Um, let me show you what I mean. 
The distance from the transmission to the body of the bug is only about 17 and a half inches. From here to here is only about 16 inches, so it'll fit. But once you add this, you're getting to about 20. We're gonna take these parts off. Hopefully that'll let us shrink the size of it down. And then if we get time after that, we'll flip it up on its end and we'll take off the front plate and see if we can get at the brushes and think about how we're going to advance them so we can run it at a higher voltage and not destroy it. Ready? Go. The parts that we took off here are actually some kind of a brake. It's good we had those brake parts because I ended up using them to create the coupling that joins the motor shaft and the transmission shaft. Without those brake parts, I would have had to have somebody make some kind of custom gear. So I'm really glad we had those parts. Okay, so we, we did pretty good. We got a lot of it apart. Anyways, that's it. There's the inside of the, of the forklift motor. Looks awesome. Thanks for your help, Zach. You're welcome. <laughs> the forklift motor was full of many years of dust and dirt and grime. So we took this opportunity to clean it out as best we could. And we went ahead and cleaned up the transmission as well. Well, this should be fun. I'm gonna test the motor and see if I can actually make it spin, which is something I probably should have done a really long time ago, but I was so caught up in the fun of the mechanical parts and making things fit and gears and grinding and welding that I kind of brushed past this. I'm gonna test this uh, not the way smart people do it. <laughs> Before I destroy the transmission to make it fit on this motor, I wanna make sure that this motor is gonna work. This is a 12 volt battery. Uh, this is a series wound motor. So well, we've got a plus and a minus, plus and a minus. We're just connecting, I'm gonna connect these two. I don't know for sure if that's the right way to make it spin the direction I want, but I'm gonna connect those two together and then connect positive on one of those, negative on one of those. And if it spins the wrong way, then I turn it around. If it spins the right way, I leave it. If it doesn't spin at all, <laughs> I guess I go get another one, so. All right, this is a very real, it'll work or it'll explode moment here. No spinny. Crap. That doesn't make me feel good. Let's see if we need to switch these. I doubt it. This is a 12 volt battery, so it really should make the motor spin. It's only a 48 volt motor. Nothing. Dang it. Nope. Well, I guess maybe I got a bad motor. That sucks. Dang it. Crap. That's really, really too bad. This project just got a lot more expensive. So I just left the motor shop and I got my forklift motor back from Danny. Danny is a cool dude. Danny is uh, from China. He's 65 and he knows everything there is to know about uh, electric motors as far as I can tell, especially DC motors. He fixed my forklift motor. It's not cheap, but still cheaper than what you could buy a motor like that for brand new. And now basically it's brand new. Excited. Thanks, Danny. I got the motor back from uh, Danny, the electric motor master. <laughs> And uh, he fixed it all up. He did a whole bunch of work on the inside and uh, should work now. So I've got my field and armature coils connected and then positive and negative on one of each of those. And this is a little 12 volt battery here. So when I connect this positive, that should spin. Nothing. All right, so I checked the continuity in my coils here, and it's continuous. Okay, so everything is connected from here, through this coil, uh, out here, into this coil, through there, and out there. These are all connected, so that everything in the motor seems fine. I'm wondering if maybe this little battery just doesn't have enough, maybe it's just an amp issue. So I've got two batteries now and uh, I've got them connected in parallel, so they're still 12 volts, but they'll be twice the amps. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe this motor just needs 
more current than these little batteries can provide. Maybe that's why it didn't work. So we're going to try it again. All right. One there and one here. Pray for me. That was the problem the whole freaking time. It probably worked before I took it to Danny. I bet it did. Well, that'll teach you. That's the first time I've seen this motor spin. That's exciting. Worky, 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 worky. Now, I can really work on putting it in the car. Yes. Well, that's it. A little bit about my experience with the motor during my first electric car conversion. Hope that was helpful to you, or at least a little bit entertaining. I've already done a lot of the conversion, so if you want to just skip right to the end, there's a video about the first test drive. Still has a ways to go, but at least I got it on the road. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.